Hey there, I'm gonna talk about speed boosters today and specifically about the Canon speed booster with the C70. And I know a lot of you are probably interested in that because it opens up a lot of possibilities for that camera. But to do that, we need to understand about speed boosters in general. So what I wanna cover is what is a speed booster, how it works, how to calculate f-stops. Uh, there will be a little bit of math, don't worry, we'll get through it. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about crop factors, how this affects light transmission and depth of field. We're also gonna talk about what kind of lenses work with the system, some common misunderstandings about focal reducers and pros and cons and specific stuff about this Canon system that we have right here. All right, let's get into how this works. And there will be a little bit of math, but don't worry, we'll get through it. <laughs> it's important to see how this works. And if you don't already know, I used to be a math teacher. I taught high school math for five years. So we will get through this together, guys. Uh, and it'll help under help you understand some of the calculations and stuff that go on. So you can understand really what's going on here. So what I have here, this is the focal reducer attached to a 24 to 70 f 2.8 full frame lens. And this is the lens that I can use to uh, to demo this and to help explain this because this is the only full frame EF lens that I have right now. Remember also that the Canon Speed Booster converts EF lenses to the RF mount, but we'll put that aside for a later part of the discussion. First of all, we need to talk about f-stop, okay? The f-stop is the focal length divided by the entrance pupil diameter of the lens. We don't need to get too worked up about this, but the entrance pupil diameter of the lens is how big the lens looks when you're looking into the end of the lens. And this does not change no matter what you attach to the back of the lens. So that is a fixed number. So we'll take an example here. So if you have a 24 millimeter lens at the wide end of this lens, and this will have a maximum aperture of 2.8, that will give you a entrance pupil diameter of 8.57. All right, so with that in mind, the entrance pupil diameter is 8.57, and that is the maximum it's gonna open because at 2.8, that's the most light that this is gonna let into the, to the sensor. So we know that the focal reducer here is 0.71X. It says that right on there. You guys probably know that from, the, from the, the name of the product. If we take our 24 millimeter lens and focal reduce it or multiply it by 0.71, we'll get approximately 17 millimeters. And so that is the apparent focal length of this combination. This is still 24 millimeters, but with this whole package together, it's gonna act like a 17 millimeter lens. Now, if you take that 17 millimeters and you divide by the entrance pupil diameter, which again, does not change of 8.57, you'll get F2. So this is on the wide end is a 24 millimeter F2.8 but once you put the speed booster on here, it is now a 17 millimeter F2. Hope that makes sense and clarifies a few things. So as I said, on the wide end, this is 24 millimeters and has a maximum aperture of F2. But on the camera here, you'll see that it has a focal length of 17 millimeters and a maximum aperture of F2.0. So you can see that at work right here. One cool thing about the focal reducer is that it actually increases the light getting to the sensor. So if you remember from the last section that at 24 millimeters in f2.8, this combination is going to be 17 millimeters at f2. So this will give the amount of light of f2 to the sensor. Now what the, you're seeing in the camera when you see that 17 millimeters in f2 on the camera, that's set up as a super 35 sensor. So this will actually give more light to this camera than it would to a full frame camera with this lens on it because of the speed booster. So again, it's kind of weird, but you'll actually get another stop of light in terms of low light to the sensor than you would if you put this full frame lens on a full frame camera. So for that example, I was using this 24 to 72.8 lens with the straight pass-through adapter, and that would give me 24 millimeters at f2.8. And with the speed booster on the C70, it was showing 17 millimeters at f2, and you could see that it was brighter. Give me one more stop of light. Now let's talk about depth of field, and that is a big reason why people are after using speed boosters on their crop sensor cameras. They're interested in getting a shallower depth of field, which is often you know, easier to get with full frame cameras. And so the short answer is 
This pretty much does that, but there's a long answer. So let's do the long answer as well. And for that, you need to understand a little bit about uh, depth of field in general. Now, remember, there's only a few things that change the depth of field. First of which is the focal length of the lens. So as you have a longer focal length, you will get a shallower depth of field. A wider field of view or shorter focal length will give you a uh, deeper depth of field. The next thing is going to be the aperture of the lens. So if you have a lower aperture or you open up the lens to let in more light, it'll give a shallower depth of field. And if you stop down and use a higher f-stop number, less light will come in and you'll have a deeper depth of field. And the other change that you can make is to change the distance from the camera to the subject. And so that will change the depth of field. As the camera and the subject get closer, you'll get a shallower depth of field. And when the subject and the camera get further away from each other, you'll get a deeper depth of field. So with all that in mind, we'll go back to our example before. Remember that a 24 millimeter lens at f2.8 is gonna be equivalent to a 17 millimeter lens at f2. And we can do other combinations like that, like a 50 millimeter at f4 is gonna be like a 35 millimeter at f2.8. So the depth of field is set now, but if you take the same situation with the speed booster and without the speed booster, and you have 50 millimeters at f4 corresponding to 35 millimeters at f2.8, when you do that switch, what happens is the field of view gets wider and all things will stay the same. But what you wanna to do to frame up the subject in the same way that you did with the 50 millimeter lens, now you're kind of at a 35, so what are you gonna do? You're gonna move the camera closer to the subject, thus changing the distance from the camera to the subject and getting a shallower depth of field. So you're not really changing the depth of field with the speed booster, but what you're gonna do is you're changing the apparent focal length and aperture, which will keep the depth of field the same. Then you'll move the camera closer. So essentially you are getting basically the equivalent of the full frame depth of field with the speed booster, but that's only because you move the camera. So again, short answer is yes, you basically get the same depth of field, but it's gonna be at a lower f-stop number on your camera than it normally would. Again, so like f2, on the speed booster on the C70 is gonna be the equivalent of an F2.8 depth of field on a full frame camera. Calculating your new crop factor is pretty straightforward. You take your current crop factor and you multiply by, in this case, 0.71, but depending on your speed booster, it might be something else, but a lot of them are 0.71. So on the C70, depends if you're shooting DCI or UHD. If you're shooting DCI, the crop factor is 1.46. You multiply that by 0.71 and you get 1.03, 1.04. And if you take, if you're shooting the UHD, the crop factor is 1.53. Multiply that by 0.71, you get 1.08, 1.09. So you can see that it's not one-to-one -one, and there's a slight punch in from the full frame equivalent, but you can take you know, your crop factor on your camera and just multiply it by the focal reducer and you'll get your new crop factor and you can apply that to every focal length that you use with that speed booster. A couple things to talk about here in terms of lenses with the speed booster. A lot of people think that it just turned your camera into a full frame camera, which as you know, we've already gone through the fact that it doesn't, but it kind of does, you know, at the same time. So you got to make sure in this case that you're using full frame EF lenses on the speed booster. Remember, you're going from full frame EF to super 35 RF. So you need to have full frame EF lenses. I know a lot of people probably own and use the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 on their crop sensor cameras, either cinema cameras or APS-C cameras, unbelievable lens, super sharp. And I know a lot of people have this in their kit. This will not work uh, with the speed booster because it's not a full frame lens. It won't create an image circle that's large enough uh, once it goes through the, the speed booster to the camera. So again, stick to full frame lenses for this speed booster. Image quality is one of those things that I had a lot of questions about before trying a speed booster, and I wanna talk about those right now. First of all, we know that it will increase the light transmission and you can achieve a shower depth of field, which you've talked about both of those things. But in terms of image quality, as I said, that's a big question mark for me. Anytime that you are putting other glass elements or other things into your system, if it's a filter or a focal reducer or something like that, you have the opportunity to cause problems and complicate things. And for the most part, 
it works pretty well. I have to say it's really good. The autofocus works great. Um, you know, all of the electronics work really well through the camera and the lens. They talk to each other really well. And the one thing is with certain lenses. Now, if you are, you know, using a full frame lens with this, then you are actually using the full, you know, image out of that lens, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. Now, a lot of times, you know, if there's a problem in the center of a lens, then it will amplify that if you are, you know, not using the speed booster. So if it's more even across the lens, then you'll get more of that quality going through the speed booster because it's funneling that through the speed booster. Now, if you have a, an, a lens that has, let's say, problems at the edges of the lens, well, now what you were doing before without the speed booster was just looking at the center of the image and you're kind of not looking at the edges. So if it was vignetting or corner sharpness or, you know, distortion or something like that, well, now with the speed booster, you're going to pull all that in. So you could be amplifying some of the issues along the edges. Now, the big thing I have, the big thing that really bothers me about the speed booster that keeps me from using it a lot is this dreaded purple circle that appears when you are backlighting your subject. I did a whole video about that. I won't get into it too much right now, but I'll leave a link down below for you to check it out. I've tried it with different lenses and it Frank, and I've tried it without the speed booster. So it's definitely the speed booster that's causing that. And I tried it with very nice glass. So there is, as I said, it can complicate the image quality when you introduce other pieces of glass into it. But other than that, I've, I've used it in a bunch of situations and it works great, but there is that one fault with the speed booster and getting that purple circle. Build quality on the Canon speed booster is awesome. It's kind of what you expect with this price tag and being made by Canon for this specific situation. It's got some weight to it, which I actually like because adding a little bit of weight to cameras like this can be helpful getting rid of micro jitters. This is a fairly light camera, so that's kind of nice. But I can't stress enough, it feels great when you're using it. It clicks in, it's really solid. There's no jiggle to it whatsoever. And I don't like using adapters in general, but this is one I've been okay with because it feels so solid on the camera. And the other thing that's really cool is that it comes with these mounting brackets here. And there's these four screws here. You can take those out and these screws don't fall out of the bracket, which is also super nice. And these go on just like this. I'm not gonna bolt them in right now, but they go on there and it really firms everything up and just makes it really feel like one piece. And having that ability to have a really solid adapter and be able to bolt it on just gives you a lot of confidence when putting on heavy lenses and stuff like that. It makes it really feel like part of the camera and it kind of just turns it into an EF mount camera. Let's talk about the pros and cons, but we'll start with the pros. Well, first of all, I think the biggest ones we already talked about is you kind of get that full frame look, right? I know it's not exactly a full frame camera. We already went through all the details there, but you are getting more light transmission and a shallower depth of field with the same lenses. You get to use the full potential of full frame glass. So if you are buying the better Canon lenses, the L series lenses, these are full frame lenses and to use the full potential of them, yeah, you know, and if you're doing that on a super 35 camera, you're not using the full lens. So I think that's really cool to be able to use the full potential because if you're buying these and just using super 35, then you're kind of just using the center of the lens. So I think that's really cool. A lot of these EF lenses are a lot cheaper than the RF lenses. So that can be a benefit if you're looking for, you know, high quality full frame lenses from Canon. So that's a great thing because a lot of the EF lenses are older. As I said, more light transmission is a benefit as well as that, you know, more shallow depth of field. A really high quality build on this. I think it's awesome. It feels great. It really feels like part of the camera. And the last thing I want to mention is having different focal lengths because if you, let's say, buy a 35 millimeter prime lens and you put on your focal reducer, you get roughly a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent. But if you take that off and you use the, the pass through adapter, which is $100, which I think everyone has at least one or, the, one or two of these laying around if you're shooting with Canon nowadays, you can also get the equivalent of like a 50 millimeter lens. So one lens can have different focal lengths and it will also work for zoom. So I think that's another benefit um, is that with this adapter, you're kind of getting multiple lenses out of the same lens. So a lot of cool things with the focal reducer. Now onto the cons. First of which is what I mentioned a little bit earlier in that adding more glass into the optics of your system can create problems. 
And so, as I also mentioned, that dreaded purple circle drives me absolutely crazy and has really kept me from using the speed booster in a lot of situations. Uh, I'm probably still gonna use it for a few things, but I don't think it's gonna be my go-to situation and setup for when I'm running, gunning, doing documentaries. I lost a few shots because of it and I'm not gonna be going back and getting pickup shots for those. So you gotta keep that in mind. Anytime you're adding in glass, you can change the optics in a good or a bad way. It is an adapter, and anytime you have an adapter in there, it is a potential point of weakness. It could cause trouble down the road, you know, things like that. It, it is a more complicated system. Um, I haven't, as I said, I haven't had any problems with it, but again, it is an adapter, and you're not natively mounting lenses onto your camera, and it will make the lenses stick out further. So that's something else you want to keep in mind. The weight, um, you know, if you really want a lighter setup, this does a little bit of weight, but I think it's kind of a pro for me, but it could be a con for you. You can't use crop sensor lenses on this, and I mentioned that before, so you're gonna be having to use more expensive full-frame lenses, but again, if you're going for that full-frame look, you're gonna need full-frame lenses. This thing is expensive, it's $600, and so if you're taking a $5,500 camera, now up to $6,100, that's a lot of money. So it's something that you wanna keep in mind. Wow, I had a lot to say about the Folk Reducer and it's super cool, but overall I think it's a really cool piece of technology that I'm really glad is available for these cameras. I think it really adds a lot of different options for the C70 with that RF mount. I think it was really clever of Canon to put that in there and also to make this speed booster uh, available for everybody. You gotta think about if this is worth it for you in terms of the other cameras you shoot with. Is this your A cam? Is this your B cam? Are you shooting off full frame cameras? Are they RF? EF mount. The speed booster can also work on the RED Komodo. So that's another Super 35 RF mount camera that this can work on. But uh, yeah, a lot of different options out there. Like if this is your B cam to let's say a C500 Mark II, it's kind of a no brainer, then everything kind of works the same. And you know, if you're shooting on Super 35 sensor cameras, like you know, the C200 or maybe the C300 Mark III or C300 Mark II, something like that, you know, then you gotta think, do you just wanna be all in on Super 35 and then just use Super 35 lenses? There's a lot of trade-offs. It is expensive, but I think it's uh, it's definitely worth it because of the quality and the flexibility it can give you with your rig and having the same lens give you different focal lengths and all that kind of stuff. So hope you found this helpful. And if you enjoyed this and you're finding this useful, please consider hitting subscribing. It'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.